Hi, I'm Belmont Police Chief James McIsaac. I'm the Belmont Police Chief. This is our 10th episode of Ask the Police Chief, where you as residents get to ask questions via email at collaboration at belmontpd.org. Today's question comes from a resident who heard me speaking at a meeting, a public meeting a short while ago. And I had mentioned that we were applying for a grant for a co-responder social worker to work alongside the police officers in Belmont. And I'm happy to report that um, the process began in July and we've been approved for a grant for this program. And we interviewed a social worker yesterday uh, who was an excellent candidate and we will be having a co-responder working with the side-by-side -side with the Belmont police officers in Belmont very shortly. And I'd like to take a few moments and explain how the process works and what a co-responder does with working alongside the police department. We had applied for a grant through the advocates to their jail diversion program where they provide social workers, which we refer to as co-responders to area police departments. Watertown is a close department to us as a co-responder. Arlington does as well. Actually, Watertown has two. And so we applied for this grant. We uh, Part of the process is, is that we submit uh, details and data about our police department. One of those, uh, one of those data points that we, we submit is um, how many mental health calls our offices go on, the time of days they go on. And so we were approved. And also I have to mention that Middlesex District Attorney, Marion Ryan was a big supporter of us getting, these, getting this co-responder program up and running. Um, she, uh, uh, at the murder, after the murder of George Floyd, uh, Mary and Ryan and I uh, attended a lot of public meetings together in Belmont and in the area, and she saw how many times I was asked about uh, if we had a social worker, when we would have a social worker. And so she was a big supporter of this program for us. And, um, you know, I think that she sent some letters. She, I don't think I know she sent some letters of support to the advocates um, for us to get this, as well as did town administrator Patrice Garvin and West Chen and the Board of Health, they also submitted supporting documents for why we should have a co-responder. And the way the co-responder process works is so we, after we were approved for the grant, we interviewed as a, a police department with uh, members from the, the advocates. And then we, uh, we brought in, they selected a co-responder for us. Uh, we interviewed her yesterday She's an excellent candidate, comes from a great background um, in social work. And what will happen now is that candidate will do a ride along with the Belmont police officer. And after that, um, when, if, if she's on board with coming here and, and we think she's a good match for our department, she will go to, for training for five weeks at another police department that has a co-responder. And so when she comes back here after five weeks, she'll be fully trained and uh, be able to work. And the way it works is she'll be working a Monday through Friday schedule, 1 p.m. to 9 uh, one p.m. to nine p.m. And she'll come into work and she'll actually ride with a Belmont police officer in the cruiser and will be available um, you know, to respond to calls that, would, that require social workers. She's uh, proficient in de-escalation, recognizing when people are suicidal, and, um, you know, she talks, the, the, the talk, the clinicians talk and can help us uh, interact with outside agencies on, on these things. And so we're real excited about it. Um, it's not an easy thing because though everybody wants to have social workers working in the department, not all social workers, uh, you know, are attracted to this type of work. Um, she's going to be, you know, in a cruiser. She's going to be going to all the calls. And ones that she's not um, needed at, you know, she'll she'll sit in the cruiser. I also need to point out she's not an employee of the Belmont Police Department and she's not a town employee. She works for the advocates. Her supervision will come through the advocates. So it doesn't cost the town anything um, in terms of that. I just have to provide a space for her here at the police department. And um, she has her own record management system that's all protected by HIPAA laws. And the, the advantage of that is if um, she encounters somebody in the street or if she's going to a call for somebody's in, in crisis, she can put their name into their system and she can get records if they've been had interactions with any clinicians in, in other surrounding communities. 
which um, we just had somebody that we've dealt with here a number of times um, in Belmont just had a, a, an incident, an interaction with the Watertown police in Watertown. So, you know, being able to, for clinicians to be able to share that information is extremely valuable. But for us, it's, it's a big thing because, um, you know, people that are in crisis that we deal with on, on, you know, more than once, more than twice, will have a familiar face now, rather than, you know, sometimes they, people will, will, will prefer to talk to one officer. And because of our schedules, you know, they, they, it, it, it's not possible to bring that officer in. Um, the clinician will also be available to conduct follow-up follow-ups to check in on people um, that, that we deal with. So we're real, we're real excited about having this program. I know people in the community are excited about it, and um, it's gonna it, it, it's gonna be a big plus for our department. The officers are excited about it uh, because you know they they're all you know they all have different skill sets and everything and. You know, to ask them on a, on a daily basis to deal with these types of calls, this is a great asset for us to have. So we're excited about that. And we're thankful for all the people that, that supported it, especially the Middlesex District Attorney, Mary and Ryan, who, uh, who supported this program. So we're really looking forward to it. And I just wanted to change gears a little bit and, and just give an update because as some of you may know, um, we did a citizen survey where we put out to, uh, to get feedback from the community. And we received a great deal of responses from people that were not happy with the Belmont Citizen uh, Herald discontinuing the police blotter. So what we did was, um, and I spoke about this in a previous episode, we, we have a uh, police blotter on our website, but um, that just kind of gives you a basic uh, incidence of response calls, doesn't really go into depth. So what we've done is, uh, Sergeant, uh, Traffic Sergeant Paul Garabedian and Detective uh, Jimmy Syracusa came up with the idea of having a, uh, a bi-monthly police bulletin. And our first one um, was placed today on our Facebook page. And we're gonna, we're gonna work to incorporate that in our website. And while it's only one page right now, we anticipate that this bi-monthly uh, police bulletin will, will expand. As we get uh, as we get moving on it, and it'll contain uh, more information. We hope that people are looking for um, that they used to get from the the police blotter, the the weekly police blotter that Belmont Citizen Herald did. So that wraps up our tenth episode of Ask the Police Chief. If you have a question that you'd like answered on an episode of Ask the Police Chief, you can email us at collaboration at belmontpd.org. And we will hopefully get to your question and answer it on Ask the Police Chief. Thank you very much.